Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Lauren and today I just wanted to get on the camera because I just finished watching Love is Blind Japan and I just had to talk about it with somebody and I feel like this is the best place to do so because maybe you'll have some opinion about it as well or if you haven't watched it, watch it right now and then come back to this video because this video is going to have major spoilers. So now that everyone has watched it and you are here, Oh, oh my gosh, I don't even know where to begin. Okay, so watching Love is Blind Japan, I watched it right after the second season of the American one. It's so refreshing to see <laughs> because in the Japan version, everyone takes the experiment seriously and I really like the interactions between people opening up. So I can't say this about everybody, but I feel like people in Japan versus the US, like people in Japan are less confrontational and then they kind of hide behind a screen you know like if something is bothering them they're more less likely to just be like hey this is what's bothering me and they're more like to themselves this is what i observed me being there and then a couple of people that i know who live there and like a couple of family members who i know as well who live there to be honest my family in japan are super loud so we might be the exception but a lot of people you know they are more to themselves and they just kind of do their own thing they don't go out of their way to talk to people i remember there was like an instance where i was in japan and then i had two huge set heavy suitcases and that was my first mistake because a lot of people don't bring like extra extra large suitcases i was there for two weeks i packed a lot of stuff so i had a bunch of stuff and we had to take the subway to our airbnb and then one of the elevators wasn't working in one of the stations that we were passing through. So I had to carry two huge suitcases by myself up like three flights of stairs. And then, you know, no one, no one really helped. I feel like in America, more people are inclined to help you, but I don't know, who knows? Again, this is just me observing and my experiences there. I feel like in Love is Blind Japan, it was a great way for people to open up to each other because they're not forced to talk to each other face to face right away, like right off the bat. It's more comfortable for people to talk behind a wall sometimes and you have to make conversation just through speaking and not body language, the physical appearance aspect of things are all taken out of consideration. You don't feel intimidated or you don't feel worried about how you look because you just have to use your voice. One of the things that I really liked is how they kind of went through everybody or most people on the show. They gave them a chance to speak and have a conversation with somebody. They showed more of the pod interaction and I feel like in the American one, they just kind of skimmed through it. They introduced a bunch of people, but when it got to the pods, they cut out everybody aside from the people that were actually doing the experiment. It would have been great to see a couple of the people that weren't chosen interact as well. For example, in the Japan one, there are like a couple of people that didn't get chosen, but they had screen time and they were able to speak and have a couple conversations with some of the other people as well. So let's get into it, the juicy, juicy details. So I want to tell you all the people that I liked and didn't like on the Love is Blind Japan. So the girl that I really liked the most from the very beginning, and then I actually said it as I was watching, I really like Motomi. She is one of the girls that got chosen and then in the end got married to one of the guys and I always liked her vibe. I felt like she was super real and super nice and conservative. More of the traditional Japanese girl and not westernized at all. And I don't know, I really liked her. She was my favorite and so I'm so happy she was able to get married at the end. I feel like the guy Ryotaro, he was also a super good fit for her very genuine i feel like both of them make an excellent couple and i thought it was super cute that he works at a hair salon and he styles girls hair and for their wedding he cut her hair for her i thought that was really cute and also another thing that i thought was really cute was that they were both worried because her parents are super strict and more traditional and they're not used to like probably like online dating and stuff so going on to like a TV show to get married 
within like a month or whatever was super hard for them to handle and Ryotaro always stayed true to himself and he was like I'm a blonde that's who I'm gonna be but then when he met the dad he dyed his hair just to prove that he's serious about her so I also thought that was really cute and then also the dad was the one that is the most strict and who they were worried about the most but then he said like oh he's a good guy i still need to have a little time adjusting but if you're happy then that's all that matters you know and i think that you are with like a good person so when he said that i was like oh yay he accepted their relationship and the circumstances and he even went on to reality tv show to talk about it apparently he looks a little bit like an asian version of colonel sanders with his hat but yeah, I really like them. So now I want to talk a little about Midori and Wataru. I feel like they're more of the westernized couple. I know Motomi and Ryotaro was super like Japanese and traditional, especially when they met on the bridge. They were kind of shy. Well, it was more like she was like, oh my gosh, I didn't know you had blonde hair. You're like some gangster or something. And then she was like kind of taken aback and kind of scared. Midori and Wataru lived in the US, I believe. I think she lived in Ohio and he lived somewhere in the US. So then they can speak English as well. Theirs were a little bit more westernized. And when they saw each other on the bridge, they just made out or whatever. It wasn't like the US version version where Shake like grabs the girl's ass or whatever. That's another thing. In comparison to the, the US and Japanese one, the Japanese one, they're super considerate of the girl and then they were like bowing and they're like, oh, nice to meet you, nice to meet you. Oh, thank you so much, thank you so much. Bowing and then the US one, they just come trotting in like, ooh, that girl has a hot piece of ass. I mean, I live in California and that's just how People are just different and it's just the culture. The Love is Blind Japan was like a palate cleanser for me after watching the original because I was like, on the American one, they're like something. If someone talked to me like that, I'd be like, bye. <laughs> So let's go back to Midori and Wataru. They also got married and I thought they were super cute as well. The only thing though, I feel like Midori was a little watered down version of Shake because every single time, I mean, I understand because the girl tried so hard to get this guy and she's probably thinking, damn, he's super hot. His voice is so deep. He can speak English. He's really good looking. But then when she saw him, oh, he kind of looks like a hamster. That's what I thought. <laughs> this show is all about what's on the inside, not appearance wise, but like, if you're trying to marry someone, you have to be physically attracted to them too. Again, I'm not shake level at all. He's on another level. I just, I can't even talk about him because he makes me mad. I understand where she's coming from, but girl, like, come on. Like every single scene, she's like, ooh, I don't know if I could marry this guy. Ooh, he's not really up to par to my standards. If I close my eyes, I'm so happy, but I feel like she was not physically attracted to this guy at all. Luckily, her mom kind of gave her the push to like still follow through. This guy has like a really nice heart. I feel like deep down he knows that she's way out of his league. So he tried working out for her. Things like that is super sweet. And again, reason why I like these types of shows because it's not like always because of physical appearance. It's what's on the inside. And I was so happy that she finally saw through that and was able to marry him for who he is as a person. He is a pretty genuine and nice guy as well. Every time she would make some comment or remark he would just be like yeah i know he'd be like struggling to do a sit up and just like come on let's go let's go he lost two two pounds or whatever so maybe they're good for each other maybe he wants to work out and look good too so i like them not as much as i like ryotaro and motomi though they're my number one favorite so i got some thoughts i got some thoughts about shuntaro and ayano Ayano is 20, no, 30, she's 30, and Shuntaro is 56, and I don't know, okay, he's not elderly, but he's not young, he's around like my parents' age, and she's around my age, so seeing that, it's a little weird. I don't judge, and like, if you love the soul, if you love the person, be with whoever you want, but Somewhere like deep down, I feel like she just wanted to either like be on the show because of the way they edited it. It seemed like she 
just picked him as a last resort and she was like oh well you know i really want to be with you but in actuality she didn't want to be with him i don't think because of the age gap which is understandable but why put him through this you know i mean the man the man's wife died oh i don't know again he's not old but i feel bad for like older people he just wants to find love again to replace his wife and there probably won't be someone like that and you're trying to date this really young girl who's like hey i don't know she just seemed kind of dumb to me i feel like it's because of the way she talks she was like oh ha, 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 i like books ha, ha, ha. i didn't really like them together so i'm glad that they didn't follow through with the wedding but I think her whole plan all along was to not get married because of the age gap and because she just, you know, didn't want to be with him. For his age though, I feel like he looked really good. He introduced her to his younger brother and his younger brother looked older than him. So I was like, go, go man. You deserve happiness. You'll find it somewhere else. Maybe someone closer to your age. Oh, and then take pictures of your, oh my God, I thought that was super cute too. I couldn't find his Instagram, but then apparently he said that he posts a lot of pictures of his food and then chefs like it and respond to it and stuff. And then she was like, oh, why is he taking pictures of his food? If that's his passion, then let him do that. That's so cool. I take pictures of my food all the time. I don't care, but yeah, fine. I believe in you, sir. Find love who likes to eat as just as much as you do and take pictures of food as much as you do. Next couple, we have Kaoru and what's his name? Mizaki? Miyuki? I forgot his name. The funny one. I feel like the reason why that they did not get along at all is because their personalities are just polar opposites. I don't know because he says that like oh I didn't know I was kind of airheaded I didn't know that I was kind of dumb but the things he says is so funny I don't know if he does it on purpose or he's just naturally just stupid <laughs> but I thought I thought it was super funny he's very carefree he doesn't take things seriously at all whereas her personality is serious and cares about things super meticulous about things she's trying to become like a singer I didn't know if she's trying to be on the show just to get coverage for her career as a musician I thought her singing was really good she's super pretty one fact that I found out for those of you who watch Terrace House I saw I think this was in the Tokyo one Haruka who was on Terrace House I saw her on Love is Blind on the episode where they were trying on wedding dresses I was like oh Oh my god, that's Haruka from Terra's house. And then I looked it up on Reddit after the show finished because I was like, I wonder if anyone else caught that. And then it turns out that apparently on Terra's house, Kaoru had a guest appearance as well. She was the singer that Haruka went to go see perform. But I don't really remember. I think it was when it was Haruka and Eden Kai, they were both on it together and then they went to go see someone perform. That's what somebody said. But I don't really remember Kaoru being on it, but it's just crazy how the worlds collide. I mean, like it's funny because we say like, ooh, it's like a collision of two shows, but you know, they're both somewhere in Japan and Japan's not that big. So it's not surprising that people are on two separate reality shows. I actually saw two people from Terrace House too when I went to Japan in Shibuya. And then one of my friends also knows Eden Kai. So it's pretty cool, small world. But again, I really did not like them together. And I'm glad she finally was like, yeah, I, I can't be with you. He just needed to take life a little bit more serious when she had a couple of serious conversations with her. He kind of was just like, eh, you'll be fine, whatever. When it was something like really important to her, you know? And then I just feel like he wasn't the right person to tell. She said, oh, I don't really tell people, but you're talking about it on reality TV. Girl, go find someone that is serious about you and that relates to your personality. And Mia Miyazaki, oh shoot. I'll just call me and me keep doing you go to Kenya live your life be carefree You'll find somebody that wants the same thing as you as well I just thought he was so funny at sometimes because one time that I thought was really funny is he's like on a horse And then all of a sudden the horse moves. So he's like, all right, bye And then he comes back around hi again <laughs> like Just stuff like that. He doesn't even mean to be funny. It's just funny to me But that's the type of personality I have as well more of like a carefree whatever not serious personality So that's why our personalities kind of align and I find that stuff funny whereas she wouldn't next I wanted to talk about Priya. I always forget the guy's name I don't know why 
I thought the guy that she said yes to was the cutest one on the show. To be honest, like everyone on Love is Blind Japan was kind of ugly to me. I thought Ryotaro, his smile was cute, like his eyes, but that's about it. And then Priya's guy, he was like the cutest out of all of them. She's super, super pretty and she has a really determined, strong mentality. She's literally like the girl boss type of person where she is an entrepreneur. I believe she has her own startup company, startup skincare or makeup company. I realized after watching this show that she was also Miss Japan a couple of years back and she just needed to find somebody that was more like her because the guy that she was dating kind of put on this facade because she's like this really huge go-getter whereas he, you know, is an employee at a restaurant. So he kind of put up a facade by saying, oh, I'm an owner to this restaurant. And then when he was confronted, it turns out that he is just an employee. He didn't put any money into this company. He had a restaurant or he had like another company that went bankrupt. Like there's so many things that went wrong with his life. So I think he was just trying to compensate and just kind of make himself look better than he actually is. And it kind of just blew up in his face. I feel like she made him look worse by like making him feel bad because you know it's like kind of adding fuel to the flame right when you know you already kind of feel bad about yourself and then someone's like well how come you're not like this how come you don't do this i'm like this like i'm better than you and when people do that it makes you feel even worse and you just want to put up a front and pretend that you're somebody who you're not so you don't feel bad about yourself this happens a lot to just people in life in general the most insecure people put up like a front or hype themselves up or even go so far as to insult other people because they feel bad about themselves on the inside so i just feel like that's how it was he kind of was silent when she was like barraging him with questions like why aren't you doing this like you promised me this like this is gonna be our whole life which i understand as well because she just wants to have stability and to have a partner that can match her girl boss energy but yeah you know, again just wasn't a right fit i hope his restaurant and his partners i wish them success in the future i would love to go to the restaurant and try but i was surprised as to how well each relationship was communicated some people better than others but in the end when things didn't work out they would have a conversation and be like oh this is the reason why i need to break up with you whereas in the usa one that one girl shayna who i don't like at all she's total fake in the us one in front of the camera she's like oh i really like this one guy but then to the other guy's face which is kyle he she was like oh yeah it's because of religion but then she was saying one thing to the camera and doing another and lying on live television and saying oh the reason why i don't like you was this whereas in the japan one they kind of explain oh the reason why i don't think this can work out is xyz and i thought that was really great as well and i felt the maturity level in the Japan one reflected their age bracket <laughs> versus the USA one where I'm like, oh my God, this is like teenager level shit. Are Americans just bad at communicating or is it just them? I don't know. Okay, so last one, cause this video is kind of running a little long. So I'm gonna cut this soon. I wanted to briefly go over, I keep forgetting all their names and I feel really bad. I call him Japanese Joseph Gordon-Levitt cause I thought that he, kind of looked like him a little bit and minami i thought that minami's personality was super funny and like super unique i think she's very eccentric and it was really hard to figure out exactly what the root of their problems were because it was explained that they would argue till like 3 a.m just arguing about things and they didn't show that at all so i don't know what their main problem was but basically like just their values didn't align and when he confronted her about that she was kind of understanding like yeah i know i need to change as a person i feel bad about myself maybe she was just like projecting her insecurities onto him and that was causing problems circling back to the whole insecurity thing when you feel bad about yourself you kind of insult others or make others feel bad so maybe that's what she was doing i know that he's a doctor and i forgot what her profession was but she was a lot younger than him as well he just said that they were super different and he wanted somebody that supported his profession so maybe he wanted her to just be a stay-at-home wife i don't know but yeah they just didn't work out
So I'm finishing off this video. I just want to say thank you so much for watching if you watched the entire thing. It was a long one and I'm glad I got to speak my mind about Love is Blind because I really liked it and I wish there was a second season but I know I'm probably gonna have to wait or maybe they might not even make another Love is Blind, who knows. I just needed to get my Japanese reality TV fill because I know that they canceled Terrace House which I'm really sad about but also it's understanding. If you guys want to discuss more leave a comment down below and then we can talk more about Love is Blind together. If you have any questions or any opinions on the show i'd love to hear them make sure to leave a like comment and subscribe and i will talk to you soon bye